for this video, I'm finally reading a Cawthorn Roses series. I'm always so nervous. I'm so excited. Wait, my sister has always been a massive, massive reader. She basically read these ages and ages and ages ago when she was younger, before like TikTok would ever existed. She was absolutely obsessed and she had no one to talk to about them because no one was reading them at that time. And so she's had to just stay loving the series since like day one. Finally, it started getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and now everyone has read it and it's all over TikTok, it's all over YouTube, it's all over everywhere. And from day one, she's been telling me to read it, to read it, to read it. And seeing how big it's gotten has made me so nervous, especially when this is my sister's favourite, favourite series. My sister said she doesn't like these covers because when she read like the hardback versions when she was younger, those were like the OGs. So these were all £7 each. Seven quid for this. Seven quid for this. Yeah, so let's go first impressions first of all. So I am one of those few people in the world who obviously haven't read A Court of Thorn and Roses, but also I've managed to stay away from every single thing out there that could have spoiled the books for me. My sister kept saying, oh, tell me your first impressions, tell me your first impressions. I have none. However, there are a couple things that I know or have kind of made assumptions on. I know it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I know the first one is anyways, and then I know that the rest aren't. Okay, and then I know that she gets with someone in the first book and then gets with someone else in the second book. I don't know who any of the characters are. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. Um, I know it's Faye, right? Are there wars that goes on? Like, if it's a massive fantasy series, surely it's got to have some sort of conflict, anything. All I know is that it's very smart. So I'm like, how can... How many books? One, two, three, four, five books be made out of very smart. And I'm very nervous. I'm basically gonna give you my like every thought. So this is gonna be a massive spoiler, spoiler vlog. <laughs> first question is is she english because why does the map look like it's england and ireland no that's literally england and ireland right there okay so if this is it is england i would be in the mortal realm that's what i'm from but i was born i'd say in the winter court Kind of weird. Hi. Oh, that's what I'm weird about. The whole hunting vibe. It gave like Hunger Games vibes. Like the first part, like this, like giving such Hunger Games vibes. It made me really happy to read about. And I love like strong characters where they can like look after themselves. They're independent and they're like feisty and stuff. But it's gone to the point now where she killed that wolf and now she's been taken away. Why didn't they kill her? Like he was like, oh, it's because like I killed so much already. Like I might as well just like save one person. Like he like felt bad for her because she was like, living really poor. But like why didn't he just kill her? It just it's like is there a reason? why like do they need her because they're being so nice like not only did he save her but he's now being really nice to her like i don't understand why apparently all the face are like losing their magic and stuff she could literally have free fancy food literally just paint for the rest of her life because she loves to paint and have so much fun her whole family's gonna be taken care of and yet she's like wanting to leave it just it makes me feel like bad for him like she's being really horrible like for no reason why are my cats crazy? I love the descriptions of food. But like I always love descriptions of food. <laughs> and I love that it's all like spring and flowery and pretty. I'm really enjoying it. It is nothing like what I expected to be. Like in my head, I, I didn't even know just Dark Castle vibes with princes and she had she wore dresses and stuff and that's like nothing like this is a really like fancy mansion house with like massive gardens and stables and it's all like spring and beautiful lords and stuff so like he he's a high lord i don't know i thought it would be a lot more full-on than what it is it's basically like not what i thought it'd be i thought it'd be a lot more spicier a lot quicker do you know what i mean like i just thought it'd be a lot spicier because 
I just have heard about how spicy it is. So, so Feyre, I really like her as a character. I like that she's very feisty and strong. And I like that she can kill these monsters and stuff. And like everyone's kind of shocked. Doing anything skillfully. It's more just quick thinking at the time. And then Tamlin, oh my god. He's always got, always got like golden retriever energy. He's genuinely so kind, so selfless. And just so sweet. He does so many things for her. Like small things. It's just so sweet. It's just it, sweet is anywhere like kind sweet selfless yes i said so at the moment it's just small things on his side and not really anything on her those like creatures that she basically captured one and then killed others that was really cool i liked how fast paced that was i liked how it was creatures that i haven't heard of before but actually are like mythological i'm annotating it is i just i'm thinking like ahead of myself so if i do end up enjoying this book series i might want to come back and reread it like i am with harry potter sort of vibe re-annotate it on top of my annotations and so I can like look back and see the annotations I made, but also then have like my annotations at that time on top of it. So first read July 2023. So that's highlighted in pink and basically all of July is gonna, all of um, the time I've read it this time is gonna be um, in pink. And then if I ever come to reread it in like future years, then that would be a different color. I also forgot to say that it's really fun like spotting all the Beauty and the Beast references, which is like, yeah, it's cool. So like obviously it was set in the snow. She's, her name means beauty apparently. I'm gonna search what it means. Norse goddess of love and beauty, so that's cool. So her name is Beauty. That was the time when she basically took care of his hand which is like what happened in um, Beauty and the Beast. There's a time where she was being cornered by um, the snake people. Like how Belle was cornered by the wolves and he protected her. Now it's like he's showing her the gallery, um, which is like when the beast showed her like the massive library. And I just think it's so cool, like all the little similarities. I'm really enjoying it. Okay, oh my god, I just got to page 188. Oh my god, I think it's him, right? Is it him? Is it the guy that she's actually gonna get with? Like, the way that I gasped, and I can't stop smiling now, like, the way he saved her. <laughs> like, I'm just so excited now, like, this is just amazing. What's gonna happen to Tamlin? Like, I feel bad, he's really sweet, like, he deserves the world. He's a little baby, like, it's sad, but like, this is cool. <laughs> Okay, so I'm actually, I'm loving it so much. I love her relationship with um, Lucian. Like her like enemies to friends sort of vibe. I think it's so sweet and like really funny seeing their relationship. I love Tamlin, like he is so hot and like they're just so sweet together. I just love everything about their relationship. When they're dancing with the Willow Wisps, what they're called, like it's probably one of the most beautiful scenes I've ever read about. It's reminded me so much of From Blood and Ash series, the way it's just a really well-written fantasy of some like, I don't know, I just, it's just so descriptive and just everything Everything about it is just absolutely immaculate and perfect. I just, yeah, like there's literally nothing else to say other than that it's literally amazing. Is anyone surprised that this is my favorite book in the entire universe? So I've given this like five million stars. Like it's just the most immaculate book like ever. Just like I'm in awe. Like how can someone do this? So since I last left you, so much stuff has happened. Like, reading it so fast, like getting through it. Um, I finished it last night and I was so overwhelmed. I was so drained. I cried like a bit, like a bit. I was like, I need water. <laughs> Apparently people call them recent recent but like my sister calls him rice sand and like when i read it i called him rice sand until i spoke to her about it and she was like no people say it's recent and like i completely understand that he's called reese but like rice sand just sounds better and so obviously we meet him briefly for ages he's kind of like a bit of a dick he like bets on her and the trials like so much shit happened so basically my favorite part was the trials i really like books where it's like like fighting fantasy and this book a thousand percent had that i love like fast-paced fantasy and i love the trials i thought they were so interesting and i love that like she kind of won by chance sort of vibe i just i love the trials so much and i love that rice was like helping her throughout the entire thing i love that he bet on her and i love that he's actually a good guy the entire time the time is not gonna be in the picture anymore but like 
I love him so much. He's actually golden retriever vibes. He literally has like, a heart of gold. He's so sweet. He's so in love with her. He's just so strong. And he's hot. Like, he's got his own hotness. He's not as hot as Rysan, but it's making me upset. It feels like I have to grieve him sort of vibe. And I'm nervous to see how they play it out. Like, is he going to be really mean? And then we have to hate him. I really hope that doesn't happen. So this is about, like, Rysan. So Rysan says, well, goodbye for now. He said, rolling his neck as if he hadn't been talking about anything important at all. He bowed at the waist, those wings vanishing entirely and had begun to fade into the nearest shadow when he went rigid. His eyes looked at mine, wide and wild, and his nostrils flared. Shock, pure shock, flashed across his features of whatever he saw in my face, and he stumbled back a step, actually stumbled. What is... I began. He disappeared, simply disappeared, not a shadow in sight, into the crisp air. I think this could just be him, I don't know, having a malfunction, like, I don't know what he's doing. Or it could be him realising that she's his mate. And I really want that to be true. If it's not, I'm gonna be like rethinking what the hell that enticing was. And so I think it's really good re reading this for the first time. The fact that I know that she's gonna get with someone else, e.g. Rice and I knew that she's gonna get with him. But I can appreciate and love Tamlin in this book because now, like, all these scenes are just so precious to me and I love him so much. So obviously, tears were brought to my eyes when she came back and she realised that Tamlin had been, like, taken. It really, like, I was really upset. When it came to the end, I was already just like, look, I love Tamlin so much. I don't want this to end. But it's almost like he's so distant and she was so distant that... I'm already ready for Rysan. So for the entire, like, other half of the book, obviously he was captured. And then he was just being really cold to her because he didn't want to, like, rise out of um that woman. I can't say her name. And so he was really distant in that sense. And then so I was, like, not invested in him, especially when Rysan was giving her so much attention. I cried when she was dead. That really got to me. I love when Rysan was actually fighting for her. The way that she was literally dark being killed and he was still, like, bloody and everything, trying to fight for her. And there was a scene where it was, like, she was saying stop to her, saying, like, stop hurting Rysan. And he did that thing where, like, he kind of, like, connected their bodies and he showed her what she looked like just to kind of be like come on like you look like you're about to die like i'm doing everything i can to try and save you like look at yourself but like she still ignored it and she still tried to save him like i just think it's so sweet i'm so excited for them you don't even understand and it's just like i feel like i'm gonna have to grieve the whole spring court i don't know what to do with my life this is literally the best book i've ever consumed i like gasped when i had this little breaking dawn moment when she was turned into a high fae okay so they're both having nightmares and i'm not even helping each other which is really sad <laughs> So I've highlighted this book like so much already. I'm overwhelmed by this book. It's so heartbreaking. She only fell in love with him, obviously because she loved him, but also because he was like her savior at the time. At the time she was lonely. She was like a damsel in distress and she just needed like protecting. She needed someone to be her protector. And he was what she needed at the time. But like now she's changed and she just wants freedom and she wants someone who can give her that freedom. And he can't. And it's like, he's become like actually really abusive. It's giving me flashbacks to It Ends of Us. Like at least emotionally abusive. It upsets me because it's like, I loved him so much. Reese is just literally the hottest thing in the entire world. I love him so much literally everything that he says that comes out of his mouth i highlight i'm thinking that i was a lonely hopeless person and i might fall in love with the first thing that showed me a hint of kindness and safety i'm thinking maybe he knew that maybe not actively but maybe he wanted to be that person for someone and maybe that worked for who i was before maybe it doesn't work for who what i am now I'm like, that's so sad. So, where the hell do I even start? I'm obsessed with this series. So, I am currently on page 140 of A Court of Wings and Ruin. Then, this is <laughs> the beast that has been tabbed. Five stars. When I finished it, I was, like, vibrating with anxiety. I was like, what? Like, I was like, why have they been split up? I was like, I was like, why? And I was a bit traumatised. And then today, like, my dreams were about Reese. So, um, my dreams, day dreams in the shower were about Reese. When I was watching Pretty Little Lies whilst I was cooking dinner, I was just thinking about Reese. I was like, Reese, 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 Reese. So, um, I finished this and then read this until 2 a.m. Whenever drama fantasy happens, it makes me anxious. Drama makes me anxious. There was so much drama filled at the end of this and characters being split up and drama with relationships, everything like that makes you so anxious. So this made me so anxious. So I needed to read the next book so I could be like reassuring myself, like everything's fine, everything's fine, blah, blah, blah. And it reassured me. I loved it. I was like, okay, cool. Now I know that I'm like, everything's fine. I can go to sleep. <laughs>
<laughs> and it's like a really bad trait that I have myself. I get too overwhelmed by books. This is gonna be such a funny vlog because it's actually gonna be me like changing my point of view like a million times and you guys will be thinking like, oh, like she's so weird like thinking all that. But like, yeah, okay, I don't care. Like I didn't know what's gonna happen in the story. So we have to go with it. But obviously my first thoughts were like, oh my God, like poor Tam then. In my head, I was like, he's clearly suffering from PTSD and like so is she, but he's just not dealing with it in a bad way. And deep down, I still do think that we're struggling. I still think he is struggling and I think that the way that he's tried to deal with that PTSD is through control and he wants to seem like he has both seem like he has control and actually have it and he just felt like he could have that over Feyre like that doesn't work out and it really like screws with her and it's basically abuse he basically tried to physically and he obviously did emotionally abuse her but he tried to also physically abuse her I just think it's it is heartbreaking a little bit obviously now that I'm reading it like I don't really care about anything that's happening to him all like like that much because i'm in love with reese obviously like that's like now that we're reading the third book that i'm being that way he has kind of been through a lot like kind of like i know when you compare it to reese it's nothing and reese is still the most amazing human being in the world i'm not human being <laughs> Faye. different things can break different people and i don't know i still feel a little twinge of like like bad for him at 50 percent, i was still like oh my god like poor tamlin and blah 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 like he doesn't mean it and i don't know if that says a lot about me basically 50 percent. i was like <laughs> Poor Tamlin, poor Tamlin, poor Tamlin. I have a thing where if I love someone, like, they could do anything and I'll just be like, no, like, they didn't mean it or, like, they didn't mean it that way or I'll just try and think, like, of, like, the good side of people quite a bit. So I just kept thinking of Tamlin throughout the 50%, thinking, like, like, he's just this poor, abused baby who just loves her and wants her back. The author went through great lengths to fully explain her reasoning. Whenever Feyre did something kind of annoying, like the time that she ripped into, and she ripped into Rysand and was just so vile to him. Like, when she was like, um, you're a mess or whatever. Like, she basically was projecting. I was like, I've never hated a character more. I was like, poor baby Reese. Like, how the fuck did you do that to him? I was like... I'm gonna fight her. I just love that the author then goes to the effort to explain everything in detail. It always just like, I love explanations. <laughs> and so this was perfect. She'd explain the different forms of abuse that Talon would do. And then I'd be like, oh wait, yeah, like obviously that's abuse. And I don't know. So I, I blame myself. I don't know what the hell is wrong with me. Maybe I need like some form of counseling to help with my <laughs> help with red flags. Um, But apparently I was just ignoring all of them. I was like, the book is green, so it's all green flags. Although I do feel bad. I still do feel bad. I can't stop that. I want him to have a bit of a redemption i want him to do something to redeem himself not so that anything good in his life can happen but just so that like i just like happy endings and i just feel like we saw we still got that massive book of quantum sort of races of them falling in love and i just can't get rid of that and i feel like i do just want him to have a redemption to him just sort himself out and then just kind of become a, like a recluse sort himself out maybe find love at some point maybe have a couple friends but just sort himself out maybe even redeem himself and then die do you know what i mean we start seeing more of like like the summer court we see more of uh, different parts of the world and i just i just really like that i really liked them going to different places i really liked all the characters i loved all the friendships and i loved how her finally coming into touch with like her powers i love a powerful main character and like i love all the powers that she's got like it's just so exciting to read about and so i was just lapping that up and obviously her and Reese were going so well and then we got to like the massive confession like it broke my heart when he was like actually like really hurt and she like saved him and then it broke my heart when she had a go at him for not telling her that they were mates i was like shut up you have a mate bitch like <laughs> what about the rest of us <laughs> calm down it's reese you know what i mean and it broke my heart he was just like the way she left him in the mud the way she left him in the mud oh no i was like reese i'll come help you it just broke my heart like the way that the author like thought of all of this the way she thought to put everything together just the way that i've never read about two soulmates this uh, insane in my life i just know that if i ever reread this i will bore my eyes out like i already feel like i want to cry i didn't at the time because i was reading it like downstairs like my family about so it almost like i felt like i was stopping myself crying and also i was just so shocked that i was just reading it but i feel like if i ever reread re that section i thousand percent would cry um tears have already come to my eyes in the next book and i'm surprised that i haven't cried yet like tears came to my eyes in the first one when she died he was literally crying whilst he was confessing his love to her and like the way that he's literally been there for her and that she's been in love with her from like day one before she even knew him like why can't we find votes in real life and i realized like since reading this the reason why i like fated mate romances because i just like the stability of it i like knowing that there's someone out there for you and that you don't have to stress that they're ever gonna leave you because <laughs> 
<laughs> they're there forever which is like such a really weird thing of me to say but that's how i feel like i'm still in awe of it and i still play it back in my head i still replay scenes of them in the past and just think of it from his pov this is a scene that will be ingrained in my head for the rest of my life no one can compete with reese like how am i to find a boyfriend or a husband when he doesn't exist like, I don't know what to do now. I can't remember what happened after that. It's all a blur. When she did that stupid thing where she got, like, possessed by the book or something. I was like, come on. I was like, that was really frustrating. And then she ran away from him. And that really hurt me. Like, until the end. I think until the end. Or maybe it was next book. No, I think it was the end of this. I didn't know if, like, Reese was gonna know what she was doing. And I didn't know if the bond was actually gonna be broken. That really was, like, really screwing me. I was like, no, you cannot break that bond. I was thinking we're gonna have to try and find each other again. That was making me really anxious. The entire end of this book made me so anxious. Like, I was vibrating as I came upstairs because. Like, I had to get away from people. I was like, I need to, like, process this. <laughs> like, why am I like this? I was vibrating because of this. Like, not because I was, like, hunting survival instincts because I was reading a book. Like, I feel like that just sums me up. Amazing. I will literally... I just... I'm in love with Reese. <sniffs> Nothing can beat Reese ever, 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 ever. I picked this up and I didn't get that far. Like, I got this far through reading it a little bit today. But, like, I was busy today. Yeah, I, I think I got to chapter three and I loved this. I loved her being undercover. I loved that whole aspect of it. And I love how powerful she was. And the scene when she finally came back to Reese, she literally crumpled on the floor. Like, that broke me. I cried a little bit. Like, tears came to my eyes. I don't know why I'm not crying recently. Like, it broke me. And then I stopped reading because I was, like, overwhelmed. And it was getting to a good sex scene. So I was like, just pause, pause, please, pause, please. And I love that Lucian is gonna play a role in this I, i've already forgiven him for everything he did um he does not need to redeem himself in my eyes i love him okay so i think i have a problem of like trusting people that you shouldn't trust like straight away i haven't updated you for ages like i might have to backtrack when i like i'm gonna like get to 50 percent, then do like a proper like review of the first 50 percent because like this is a beefy boy and so i haven't like properly updated you i don't think like not properly on how i feel but this is just, like really really quick we just gotten in my eyes redemption from eris he literally just said like that it wasn't his fault or whatever like and he's still really mean but like why is it giving me like david salvatore vibes like when he actually like did really horrible things like for the good and like everyone didn't believe him like he's actually really nice and like he's giving me that vibes so basically we had this whole vibe where like obviously we've got a whole bunch of like kind of i need to put a bookmark on this stupid thing right now so it's gotten to like the whole point where like a bunch of new characters are kind of like they're not new they're just like been made into Faye now so nasta and elaine were made into Faye. i love nasta it's like so cool um how powerful she is now like that's such an iconic like I, I literally love her character um but elaine like i just want to punch her in the face like come on like what are you doing but like she's already like really flimsy and completely useless and selfish and delusional in the first place when she was a human and like now that like i just didn't have any sympathy sympathy for her then and like now we're meant to have sympathy for her now and i just don't i don't care um so she's annoying me but i kind of want azrael to get with her even though like in like kind of cuteness i guess like a cute little like dance in distress of like azrael will be cute but like azrael like deserves someone who's like actually good like better like and i don't really care about lucian that much like I used to love him, obviously, but, like, now it's just, like, there's better characters. I feel like I wouldn't really care if they got together with Lucian and... What's her face? What's her face? Elaine. I wouldn't really care if they got together. And then also their mating thing hasn't ever clicked. And it's really sad because Angel's like, like, why hasn't it clicked? And it's really sad for him. So it's like, I want him to find someone else who's, like, a really amazing and really amazing for him. And then I kind of want more to get with Aris now. But, like, I feel like she's way too traumatised for that. Like, way too traumatised. So I feel like I should, probably shouldn't want that. But, like, that's just me being, like, really delusional. And you're probably watching this, like, having already read all these books and thinking, what? Like, I bet Aris does something really bad or something like that. But, like, at the moment, I kind of like Aris. I'm like, wait, like, like, I want to find out the drama and see if he's actually a nice guy. Because that'd be really cool. And then we have Cassian. And that's that. And I just want them to go to go so bad. I love this so much. I think it's just so good. Like, I love the kind of, like, enemy, enemies and lovers. I love that she's so feisty. Like, I just, I think it's so exciting. So, I'm very excited for them. And then, obviously, recent favour. Love them. Like, it's all doing really good. But, yeah, that's what just happened. I'm like, oh, my God. I like the drama. Eris. Like, he's been, like, the scum of the earth. Like, he's probably traumatised more. But, like, what he said now, it's completely screwed me up. Like, what the fuck? Like, what if, like... Oh, he's actually good. So I'm now currently, like, whatever that much is through. So I'm on page 446. So I've got, like, this much left. And I've gotten to a point where my sister was like, right, like, from now on, like, it's gonna be 
drama 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 like lots of like everything basically and i got so anxious that i had to stop reading and i can't breathe and i can't sleep i didn't sleep at all last night because of this book and already we've had two massive drama filled things when um it was the summer court like little fight like it's not a war but it's like a fight was it a war was it a baby war um i don't even know what it was they were just attacked and that got me a little bit anxious but like, that was like good like i loved all of like the how powerful um Feyre is like she's just so cool like I wish I had her powers like she's literally the coolest person ever and then we had the entire drama of all the high lords meeting and I've never been more anxious in my entire life I was literally I was literally so anxious and Tamlin like what the hell I actually hate him when my sister was saying like um oh I really struggled with reading like the first book again because like it was all these scenes with him I just hate him and like at like the second book I was like like why do you hate him like he's he's got like some problems obviously but like he can like work through them like he's not a horrible person this book i'm like he's literally a childish spoiled little brat and he he basically got his toy taken away from him and now he's angry and he's trying so much bs like i hate him now like i just i can never stomach reading about him again and i don't know i think i would still i still really want to reread this like already so i think i thousand percent i would but my sister said it was funny because she could see the signs of him being how he is in the first book so i'm like i'm like kind of anxious but like anyways yeah i'm getting so ahead of myself like i haven't even finished this series yet i still am like thinking about rereading it that whole scene that like really annoyed me because i was like are you kidding me like he was just sat there chatting absolute shit like making everything up making them seem like villains although like to be fair he did kind of think i think he does think it's all true i think he does but it's just like both reese and um Feyre, before they came here they're like right let's just be ourselves What's this, Josh? I'm sorry, you just clunked your silly little head. I'm sorry, I clunked your little head. So they've come there knowing that like they're gonna be showing themselves like as like themselves and then they just decided to just sit there and look offended when he said those horrible things about the both of them. Like why weren't they like actually no you're an abusive prick who's abusing me for ages and then when I finally got away you then stole me back. I don't know why no one like said that to him. I was sat there like I felt like I was being silenced. I was like why is like no one arguing back with him like i'd be having a massive argument with him saying all these things to him and they just kind of sat there like oh my god i can't believe you just said that and i was like come on like just have a backbone a bit and just shout at him and say this is all you've done and i know like it's hard with pharaoh because like obviously abuse victim like i don't know what she must be feeling but like she was still fighting back but like in really weird ways when she wasn't like explaining but i love meeting all the high lords and like just seeing them interact seeing them in the room together and seeing all their vibes and i love the is it decor yeah it's decor i love the decor like i just thought i think my favorite characters Feyre, obviously nesta reese and i don't really cassian and asriel if you go back to when they were humans nesta Feyre, and elaine so the reason why i think that nesta was is has always been so horrible was kind of like neglectful to Feyre and only ever protective of elaine is because i think she saw herself in Feyre. So I think that she must have seen Feyre as the one who, like her, can, like, get things done. Who's, like, they're so alike in personalities that they clash all the time. Who's really protective and just saw all these traits in Feyre. And so because she was dealing with the trauma of everything that went on differently to everybody else, I think that she then kind of took a step back and let Feyre do everything, but then took a part of the role of protecting Elaine. Because it was, like, Feyre's protecting everyone, but... Nesta still felt, felt that she needed to do something so she protected Elaine I think that was it and I'm not like I still haven't like probably forgiven her she's an older sister like are you kidding me like your youngest sister go off like that but it's almost like I want to see her thought process of that like I think it'd be so interesting she she's shown that she's resilient and that she's strong and that she will literally do anything for her family like when she literally walked ages to go to the wall for Feyre like that literally shows that she's just as strong and like selfless but she just she just does it in a different way and it's really weird and now 
I prefer her so much more as a fae because she's so much more powerful. I love how powerful she is. And obviously I love her and Cassie and like I just want them to get together like so bad. Like, oh my God, that scene. I need to get the scene up. This part I loved, page 398 and 399 when um Nessa hadn't seen Cassian since um, when, it, when he'd like, when the little summer court war thingy was over. And so she was really stressed and she's like really like worried about him. And then she says this, Nesta blurted, you didn't come to, and then she stopped herself. And like, I just think it's so sweet. Like she was like proper just was so upset. She said it out loud and then stopped herself. And then at the end he was like, the next time emissary, I'll come and say hello. <laughs> like, isn't that just so cute? Like I literally died a course on the flames because it's called that. I was like, wait, I was like, wait a minute. Um, why is that like basically like Nesta? So then I just looked, I briefly looked at the synopsis of it and now I kind of know. I didn't look properly, all I saw was names and I was like, oh shit, I just spoiled it for myself. So now I kind of know, I think this book, this is the ending. And then I think the fifth book is gonna be either the POV of Nesta and Cassian throughout all of this, or maybe it's a new book about Nesta and Cassian. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure which one it is. If something happens to any of my favorite characters, like I'm not gonna be able to cope. Like I'm gonna have to like genuinely grieve. And so like, it's stressful that she literally holds that much power over me right now. The only person that I think I will care about if they die is Cassian, Reese, or Asriel. I don't really care about any of those. Like, I'll cry and I'll be upset, but the ones that will really fuck me up are those three. <laughs> I'm terrified to carry this on. Okay, so last night I put in all, like, the tabs that I hadn't put in for ages. I've only got, like, 100 pages left. And my sister came into my room and she was like, oh, have you gotten to the traumatic part yet? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, what? Because I was, like, thinking the entire time, oh, so traumatic's gonna happen, blah, blah, Um, And then I got to this part, I was like, there's only 100 pages left, like, I think traumatic is gonna happen. She came in and said that. So now I am literally shaking. I'm actually so scared. I don't want anyone to die. Like, I'm so scared. When Tamlin helped her, I was like, oh my God. I was like, my baby. I feel like he's a dick and he's a child and he's horrible, but he's clearly still loves her so much. Like he he's like, a bobby dog, my bad. Also, I gave this analogy to my sister the other day. Like when I first read A Quartz on the Roses, I was like, Tamlin is such like a golden retriever and Reese is like this like bad guy like I was like I'm not really in the mood for like a bad guy at the moment like blah 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 it literally flips and I literally think Reese is like a literal golden retriever and um Tamlin is obviously the horrible abusive guy that's really cute but like I still think that Tamlin's a bit like a baby like he's like a puppy like annoying yappy puppy who like screws everything up and then when we find out that Morrigan more is um lesbian or at least she's bi but she's leaning more towards lesbian but it's almost like these are her two closest friends that she's been leading on for 500 years and she knows she's doing it and then she's purposely hurting as you're like she said that she goes and has sex with men like when she doesn't even want to to then spy asriel like are you kidding me i think it's horrible like i you don't have to come out to them but just say to both of them like look like, I'm not interested in the both of you, instead of never saying anything to them. She hasn't said a word to them about it. She just, like, acts like they're best friends. And then obviously they're going to think, oh, she likes me. I think I don't like her whatsoever. <laughs> so I don't think she's a nice person. And it is really sad that she can't come out. Like, that was heartbreaking and that she lost her, um, the first one that she loved. That was sad. I've got my breakfast here and I just don't think I can eat yet because I'm so anxious. <laughs> This is just the coolest thing ever. Like, you have Nemma dying against Highburn, and then all of a sudden, like, um, Tamlin and Autumn Court and everyone all comes to help them. Then they're screwed up again, they're dying again, and then all of a sudden, like, Highburn brings in more people. They're like, oh my god, we're gonna die. <laughs> And then Dracon and Miriam, is that their names? They come and then you find out that their dad has been gone for months, rallying up an entire army to help them. And like, he must think that his daughters are humans and they're like dead and everything. I just love how it all fits together. Like, their dad's doing this. And he named all the ships after them. I feel like crying. It's so cool. This is so cool. I'm gonna highlight it. <laughs> this is so cool. He said they failed me years ago, but they're not gonna fail them this time.
I just finished it and like I don't really know what to say about it as you just left. It was amazing and like obviously you saw me crying so much um about like reese like that really got to me like and i loved all the fighting scenes i think they were absolutely amazing not fighting scenes just more like the everything about the like, the war she's an immaculate author like this is just amazing like, it's insane but like the ending for me kind of felt like really underwhelming for some reason like after reese came back since then it just felt really underwhelming and i just don't know why i felt that way but it just did and so i was just like oh like i feel like i was expecting more of like a moment between between reese and Feyre after he'd like literally come back from like the dead like i wanted a bit more of a moment with them like i felt more like i was hinting at the fact that it's gonna be like another book on the wall rather than talking about all of them and like wrapping up this book and making it really special and so like i didn't really like that aspect of it like it's still five stars it's still one of the best books i've ever re um read but but i'm gonna start this hello so i finished what's this called a Court of Frost and Starlight. Um, this was super cute and super quick. Basically, when I did first start reading it, I had this whole vibe where I was just like, what the hell is the point in this book? Like, and although this didn't fully wrap up everything, it's almost like this was a really good stepping stone. It's just so perfect between books four, no, books three and four. This like little 3.5 is like so good. Anyways, then I was like, I took a day to just like not read it. Then I read the rest in one day and I just loved it so much. It was hilarious. It was so sweet. It was so funny. And it's like a perfect stepping stool from Reese and Feyre to Cassian and Nesta. Yeah, this book is a full book on Cassian and Nesta. <laughs> And I'm just so excited about it. I'm so beyond excited about it. So I think that personally, I think that I might end up liking Cassian and Nesta more. And like, that that's such a bad thing to say. Like, I feel like I won't, but I might. Something about like the really heavy enemies to lovers, the way that they literally, my favourite scene ever is the one where she threw her body on top of him. And he was like, if I could, what did he say? I have no regrets in my life but this, that we did not have time. Like, I just think I'm gonna love them so much. Like, it's so different. Like, Reese and Feyre, it was like, they were mates from like, day one. Like, he's basically known about her for ages. And when he said the things like, uh, when he said like, oh, I've been looking for you, or thanks for finding her for me. Like, that gives me goosebumps. And it just makes me really want to reread the first one. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, I can't choose my favourite, and I don't know who I'm gonna love more because recent favorite are so amazing and soul matey but then Nesta and Cassian are soul matey but they just both fight my favorite scene in this book is the literally the whole Cassian and Nesta chapter chapter 21 when he literally walks her home and like I'm in love with them I'm just so excited for them my little ratty slut Raja decided to pad and nibble on there see that that little section here He's nibbled on that. He likes to pad on my books. The amount of times I've had my books stacked next to me down here and he just goes and he just goes and doesn't get his claws out but I know his claws are coming next. So he goes and then about to get his claws out and I have to go like So where the hell do I start with this book? I'm absolutely in love with this book. So on page 308 chapter 29. I love this book so much more in the sense that I can read it quicker because I'm not getting anxious about all of like the political war stories going on like it makes me really anxious and like I love it. I eat it up. I love those scenes so much but it's like when there's so much like I can't sleep like even with this right now barely anything is happening last night I didn't sleep whatsoever because I was actually picturing um Reese's death scene in my head over and over again I was picturing Cassian I was picturing all the wars and like I I just think of like storylines that haven't even happened but to do with the characters because I'm so obsessed they are kind of a little bit better than Feyre and Reese. me and my sister were talking we were saying how we love Reese as a character we love Nesta as a character, we love Cassian as a character, but Feyre as a character, I think I definitely love her, like she's definitely one of my favourite characters of all time, but like I'm not as obsessed with her as I am with Nesta, and I feel like with Nesta, 
I kind of relate to her a little bit. Because now she's going through like proper depression. I'm just like vibe. And then like the way she's exercising. I've actually started exercising again. Um, purely because of Nasta and how like it's helping her. And when I'm doing my little workouts, I just picture Cassie and is training me. <laughs> which i know is so stupid i don't actually do it but whenever i'm like like can i get out of bed today i'm like yes i can because cassian would want me to <laughs> which is like so stupid but like it's just it's helping me in the moment like i feel this book is helping me grow as a person almost i want to join their little book club they've got going on they've got like a little bit of spice compared to i feel like Faye and reese they're not they're not the most banned people i've ever read about they're literally like the best people i've ever, I've ever read about but compared to Ness and cassian a little bit bland like so much more passionate i'm just i'm enjoying it so much and it keeps saying about how azure was like not looking at more as much anymore and he's not really as interested in her as in as in like love of hers before and obsessed like a lost puppy and i don't think that's because of elaine and like elaine's getting more of a backbone and it's like like where have you why didn't you have that backbone when like your younger sister was going out maybe if i was in her head i'd like her more she was really horrible when she was younger, like, to her sister. And I feel like we haven't necessarily had, like, a redemption from that in the sense that we got her thought process for it. Like, I, I said at some point that I think that she was just so strong-minded and thought that if Feyre is protecting everyone, like, she needs someone to protect, so she protected Elaine all of her life. And I think her coping me mechanism for everything has always been just to be mean. But I think she's always been very vigilant. And I think that if Feyre showed that she wasn't capable enough to do it, I think she would have then gone out and she would have done it. Or she would have, like she said in here, she would have sold her body to protect Elaine. I just think she's not mentally okay and never has been. She can't neglect her young sister because she's not the guardian. Her dad's the guardian. So technically the dad neglected all of them, but I don't know. I completely understand the depression. It's like really hard to not be mean sometimes. I don't know why. It's like you just get this mean, horrible side that I can't get rid of. And I completely understand. The map looks so much cooler. Like, it's a new map. I can't think of it. I can't think of what this thing's called. But basically it says, for every nester out there, climb the mountain. And I just think that they're so cute. I just love it. I think I'm more obsessed with them than I am with Perry and Reese. But like, I feel like I can't say that. Because whenever I say that, I automatically think back to when Reese died. And I think back to book one and I think back to book two when he confessed to her and like everything he did book one like I feel like genuinely after this I kind of want to reread book one just to look at all the small little things that he did to her because like the first one is literally Reese doing so much for her the second one is when he confesses the third one is when he dies and it's heartbreaking but also when Cassian and Nessa have their moment my book is upstairs I finished the entire course of Roses series it's just yeah it's absolutely amazing. Every single book was five stars. The whole vibe with Nesta and Cassian, they just broke my heart, really. There's, like, nothing else much to say. I related to Nesta so much on, like, the mental health side of things. How, like, depression can make you really quick to anger and, like, make you push everyone away. Like, without you even, like, meaning to do it, you just end up being horrible to everyone. And it was, like, really, like, eye-opening. It was, like, someone was saying, um, this you? And I was, like... No. I really like how she used like physical like exercise and stuff and like learning how to protect herself to help her with that and then finding like a job or like a hobby, being around people and like just like working on herself. Like it was really nice to read about. I like that this book wasn't like heavy war, political based. Like as I said, I get really, really anxious when I'm reading about that for some reason. Like it makes me really anxious. I loved when it got all Hunger Gamesy and she was in the right. I was like, I was like, oh my god, this is so good. I was like, I need more stuff like this. Like that was insane. I loved it so much. Like I love like survival, like fighting to death sort of vibe. Um, it upset me that she didn't win the stone thing. When you touch the stone at the top, I was like. That's really annoying that she didn't win it, but I don't care. I mean, it's cool they got, like, the whole Valkyrie thing going on. And, like, I died when we thought that, like, Cassian, like, fought through, like, the crown. Like, the crown's, like, influence to, like, turn the dagger on himself. I was like, oh. I was like, oh, my God. And then when she had a whole meltdown, I was like, this is so Bonnie vibes, you know, from TVD. I'm not going to say anything, but if you've watched it, you know what I mean. The Bonnie vibes. And I was like, this is so cool. I love that aspect. I just, I think... What really got it for me 
it was the whole Hunger Games vibe. I was like, I'm obsessed. I'm absolutely obsessed. I love things like that. And I forgot how much I love it. I need more books like that. I love fighting and like survival. I like being forced to do it. Like, I think it's just so fucking cool. And like, I loved it so much. Like I was listening to the audiobook because at one point, like I got really depressed and I had to like stop reading it for a while. And then I just couldn't get back into it. Not because it was a bad book, it's just because I couldn't pick it up, like physically, like mentally, I couldn't pick it up. So I was like, if I listen to an audiobook, hopefully I'll be fine. So I listened to the audiobook for like five seconds where I was, and, like, and then it took me five seconds to get to the point where it was like the Hunger Games esque vibe. And I was listening to the audiobook, I paused it to like annotate it a little bit. And then for the rest of the book, I forgot I wasn't listening to the audiobooks. I had my AirPods in, but I wasn't listening. I was just speed reading. I was like, wait, wait, like, why is there nothing going on in my head right now? <laughs> because I stopped listening to the audiobook. It was so funny. I was like, wow, like, that just shows, like, how much of a good book it is. I loved how protective Cassian was. I just think that the ending for them wasn't memorable. Like, it wasn't as memorable as Reese and Feyre. It was just kind of like, oh, they save each other. Then we had the whole thing of Reese and Feyre and the baby, and then they're okay. Which, like, is fine. Like, they're really cute and everything, but there's nothing really properly heartbreaking and memorable. The only heartbreaking, memorable thing that I feel went on was when she protected him in the other book, in the third book, and then also when she protected him in this book. Is I love Nesta so much. I love how powerful she is. I think it's the coolest thing ever. The fact that she made, like, enchanted weapons that, like, everyone always fights over, but she just made it. And then I loved when everyone was like, Reese, like, you and Feyre need to be the king and queen because no one's ever had this many things in their arsenal before. And he was like, no. And I was like, what? I was like, what? That would be so cool. Like, I think it's just so awesome. I love that she made all those weapons. I love that she can control, like, herself and kind of the trove. Like, when she had on all three, that was so cool. When she came out of the water with the crown on, that's such a cool moment. I just, I love it all so much. I think it's all so, so cool. And I love that she was, she was able to fight and compete against Illyrian. So this is gonna sound so bad, but you know like how it said that only however many people managed to get onto the mountain, like each year? Like, I'm gonna be really honest, it doesn't seem that hard. What, you just do a whole Candace Everdeen thing, and, like stay by yourself, like defend yourself, don't go out killing people because then you're gonna get killed. And it, it did upset me that with Cassian and Nesta, when they like became mates, like it wasn't memorable because he left her for a week and then she kind of knew what was going on, but didn't. And it was all really weird. Like, I didn't like when I became mates. I thought that was really underwhelming how it was written. But yeah, I genuinely enjoyed this so much. Like, it's obviously changed my entire personality now. And I feel like I finally belong. <laughs> I feel like I can finally talk to people about books because I've read A Court of Thorn and Razors. Genuinely, like, a once-in-a-lifetime experience and i'm happy that i went through it thank you so much for watching i really hope that you've enjoyed let me know who your favorite characters are let me know who you think elaine is gonna get with because i don't know i don't know whether gwen or elaine is gonna get with asriel so thank you so much for watching i really hope you've enjoyed i will see you very very soon